commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Tartman starting as the Orange Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we have Crossy starting as the Blue Zerg. This is going to be on Neo Dark Origin. It is lower bracket round four. Uh, double checking. I feel like I kind of got mixed up between the winners and not the, the, the brackets themselves, but somewhere in the space of commentary, I feel like I should have done winners round whatever and instead of losers round whatever or lower bracket round whatever and gone from there but anyway i don't think there are spoilers though on the direction i did it so i'm a little bit confuzzled it could also be i'm just missing a lot of replays which uh, i know is the case like i know there's a lot of games i really i really want to cast some pseudo games and i also enjoy casting urban and i don't have either of those which makes me a little sad but uh we do what we can here anyway tartman uh is gonna have his work cut out for him Crossy is just so strong. His multitasking is absolutely ferocious. Although their APM looking very similar here in the early stages. We'll see if that continues throughout. This is ZVZ on a two-player map. Looks like we have an overpool starting for Tartman. And it looks like this is a nine-pool opposite side from Crossy. So Crossy's going to have the early Zerglings out. This does give a theoretical economic advantage to Tartman overall. A lot of players uh, have been opting for the overpool. Uh, primarily, or sorry, not overpool. It was over extractor. Ignore that. Wow, I, I'm casting this late at night, and apparently I'm totally out of it. Over extractor into uh, spawning pool. Interestingly enough, from Tarpman versus a nine pool. Um, although it looks like Cross, he's going to tack on his gas later. So, what this means is there's going to be a uh, mutilisk advantage, a very slight mutilisk and scourge advantage to Crossy, or sorry, to Tarpman in the early stages, but very likely a Zergling advantage at the very early stages for Crossy. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. I don't think, I think with the gas into pool, over pool, um, I don't think there's enough time with the travel distance for Crossy. If six Zerglings are built to gain an advantage where he'd actually be able to tack away at something, unless Tartman played overly risky and went for a natural expansion. He does still need to get all of his larva worth of Zerglings out in the field, though. So we'll see how this works out. And I'm pretty sure uh, with the timing of this, the Zerglings will basically be at the ramp as Crossy Zerglings enter there. So it's kind of like that last second uh, thing. And also this gives Tartman a little bit of an economic lead uh, in the space of all this. So um, that's not to say all is abandoned for Crossy. It looks like he's just going to continue to filter out the Zerglings. So he's gone layer. That layer is actually going to be a little bit earlier than Tartman's, but he's going to have less gas overall, as you can already see, which means more Mutalisks on the ground. So right now, a bunch of... So theoretically, I think Tartman ending up in a pretty good situation here with this build order, as long as he is pretty decent at defending things overall. Overlord's going to make its way up. Um, an in-base second hatchery, by the way, pretty standard with this. It looks like Crossy going ahead. Uh, so he's got that layer up. And actually with the in-base second hatchery, that actually might... Yeah, that gives Crossy the faster spire, but still potentially fewer mutalisks depending. Uh, so we'll wait for that spire, that spire looking to drop in that back corner. Not by enough... Again, not by enough of a margin to where and the thing is is crossy executes this build quite often as well so i think he's going to have a good sense of it and i think he's going to be a, he actually won versus striker i believe utilizing this exact build Ooh, a little bit of a crack right there uh, in the defenses but in the meantime crossy going for the the lower ground natural expansion so if he weathers the initial storm of mutalisks that tartman fields then uh, and can dodge some Scourge and things like that, which he's very, very capable of. He will then end up at a long-term economic advantage because he'll have that uh, second gas, and really in ZVZ, gas is what you're talking about. Tartmine in the short term, though, up two drones, has been up two drones for, and is going to be up Larva in the short term as well. So, and that will really play a big role uh, as the Mutalists come online. So we'll see how it plays out. It's going to come down to some micromanagement. This isn't, uh, it's not a... A lost game for either player it's going to come down to execution both directions so spire finishes you're going to see the three larva produced right here from crossy there's not going to be a, a massive time lead in the space of it because you're going to see theoretically uh, four mutalisks or five mutalisks constructed on the opposite end from tartman based on what's underneath although i guess not as many because he decided to drop a creep colony interior to base never mind he's getting the full five out um, and I believe he has enough gas to go ahead and get some Scourge on top of it, which could give him an advantage 
as far as a follow-up. So, so both the larva advantage and whatnot gives him the air advantage right here, but the initial movement advantage is in Crossy's favor, and it looks like he knows exactly where that overlord is to go ahead and hunt it down. Also, there was a much earlier exit from Crossy's overlord, and he's pulling the Zerglings back. So there's the initial scourge that build much, much faster. The overlord's getting tacked away at. The mules have to be very, very careful, though. They see the scourge incoming, and Crossy able to supply Cap Tartman in the space of this. He's got the four, So he's now got the four mutalisks, four mutalist two scourge advantage and here comes the fifth uh trailing but because of the distance crossy and also the supply cap crossy is going to be able to catch right back up and end up with an economic lead down the line here because he's going to have the superior gas so tartman now pressing in not able to land with those scourge so losing a bit of oh actually never mind one of them landed but tartman lost two of his mutalists in the space to scourge as well so now going to retreat even though I think actually if he turned and fought, he might have ended up uh, in a victorious situation there because one of them's heavily damaged and a second one took a chunk of health. So with some focus fire and some micro, might have been able to pull it out. He does have a drone lead right this second, but does not yet have that natural expansion cap and does not yet have that gas cap. They should have paid a little bit more attention to that Mutalisk fight, I apologize. But Mutalisk's returning at home, still uh, looks like the air advantage barely in Crossy's favor now. More Mutalisk's overall for tartman so basically deduct the five supply and that's the supply difference that tartman uh, is down in the air battle which can be significant and I'm, I'm looking to see if tart so some scourge actually making their way forward to scout things out for crossy might even be able to suicide into an overlord as a last second uh turnaround which instead oh man donating a mutilus that, that might be nerves playing right there from tartman more scourge making the way forward tartman has not done a good job of dodging the scourge at all thus far taking some additional hits and now crossy going ahead and head on engaging and it looks like he's going to get the better of this fight the scourge going to be able to land as they're landed and there wasn't a great deal of focus fire from tartman and as a result he has several look at this so we got one uh, two, probably the same one. Uh, three very damaged mutalisks that are still in flight. So Tartman I have the good strategy, but Crossy with just the better execution overall, particularly uh, with landing the Scourge. And Tartman just having a really, I think it might have been a tournament nerve situation, having trouble uh, dodging the Scourge. But Tartman unfortunately eliminated, but eliminated by honestly one of the, the there's no shame in dropping out of this tournament to Crossy. And Tartman had a really, really good showing which I'm very happy for. Kudos to him out there if he ends up seeing this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.